Kalema throughout East African Africa at large in the schools of ministry as a guest speaker. Because when you begin with worship, you hand up on the throne. Dr. Morris Rule taught Uganda and Africa four great nations. The Bible declares, even as the word of God says, I and the children the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders in Israel. That is Isaiah I, um, eight, uh, verse 18. Number one nation is on boldness. God, You're going to preach to us, I know, but I want to hear about the association of network of churches. Okay. That God has used you to raise up. I want to hear okay. that, that fruit, and you're in front of the right man. He's going to have you right back at some time to actually <laughs> preach and deliver a message. Oh, all right, thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the network of churches that we are running in Uganda, begin with Lifeline Ministries. Uganda has um, four regions, so we raise up regional overseers, and each regional overseer uh, plants churches and puts up lead pastors in branches, and we have um, over 100 branches across the country and other nations of Uganda. But also, by the grace of God, don't thank you for this, that, uh, as I said, in the network of churches, born again faith which is a leading uh, umbrella that works with the entire body of Christ, all denominations. We are privileged to lead a team of uh, leaders under Dr. Joseph Serwada and I am his deputy that has churches, over 40,000 local churches all over the country. And these churches work together and we organize crusades, organize conventions, we move around. And, but we also, at that point, work under Inter-Religious Council of Uganda. I am, the, I, am the, I am a member of the board, and I chair a committee of the audit. In, in, in religious Council of Uganda as all the faith base, so we're privileged to be inside there so that we are working together to raise the house of God. The beginning of all ministries started when um, we plunged into Dr. Morris Rulo and we began moving with the work of God. Right now, uh, Uganda is extremely active on evangelism, on prayer, and uh, we thank God Almighty. As Francis last evening reminded me, Bishop Francis, and the one thing I remember out of that is that when David, when, when, when King Saul looked at Goliath, he said he's too big to kill. But when David looked at Goliath, he said he's too big to miss. This ministry is too big to miss. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. So are we there or, or do you need more time? We're there. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's give for these wonderful technical people, instant in season, dealing with situations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So as we said, France, which of course for Dr. Srillo, uh, shall we go ahead? Are we all right? You think? Uh, is a great gateway to French-speaking Africa. And we have so many wonderful uh, materials, including translated by our precious brother, Mark Masson. And uh, so here, but here I'm in with Bishop, uh, Pastor Nequim, and we'll see. Mais je ne reçois pas pour moi-même, mais pour celui qui seul est digne d'être loué. Hallelujah. This was right after their equivalent. Oh, it was big riots were taking place because of a, a boy that had been killed. And it was a time when they were really driven to their knees. And so people looked to Brother Srillo in such propitious moments uh, and to his ministry for strengthening. Then I was with Brother Srillo in a number of countries where he wept. And one of them was Turkey. We went in 1999. He ministered in Ephesus in the great amphitheater and then also in Istanbul. But he was under such a burden for those souls, which are now over 100 million. So then was here he is ministering in Istanbul, Turkey, as part of the extension of this trip. And then, of course, we follow up and we pray and minister and impart. And uh, we have a vision 
for the souls of Turkey. We pray for your agreement. Hallelujah, that God has not left Turkey out. You know, their Islam is very relaxed and lukewarm, but there's a lot of opposition and a lot of division. But Dr. Srillo has uh, ingredients like unity in the spirit, like proof producers, like declaring war on the devil's war. Dr. Srillo also is active in the Telugu language. So I had some other stops when I was in South Asia where Dr. Srillo was able to minister and we're reconnecting with leaders that uh, his lives touched greatly uh, clear back into the uh, 1990s. And um, of course, then we have the impartation, we have the miracles, we have the prayer, and then we follow up guiding them, especially those that are good in English, but now we're getting into more languages, to your online God's Victorious Army School of Ministry. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, no. Come on. That's... Brother Sroll would say, that sounds like my grandchildren clapping. Come on. Of course, today... Today, his grandchildren, that's not a small thing. So anyways, this was a tremendous time. Now to his church, which is the church founded and planted by your national Reverend Raymond Mui. So they turned one of the services over to me while he was traveling. And we were able to feature also Dr. Cirillo. And he's an example of how God has given him favor very much through the supernatural, praying for senior government leaders. And now without any of us donating a dime, he is able to channel and bring uh, solar uh, power to give electricity to many of the churches in Sarawak, East Malaysia. He is helping guide them to put street lights so people can come home, uh, basically just getting people to do what they're supposed to do as a spiritual advisor and leader, in addition to tremendous uh, charitable and humanitarian outreach uh, that he does. And of course, Dr. Srollo is a pillar, but also your ministry is helping make possible an expanded school of acts. Can we say that together? Now, I want you to appreciate this, because this is not as outwardly flashy as many approaches to ministry. But you sent Raymond Mui to the School of Ministry it was at the El Cortez. He went forth, founded the School of Acts. And from the School of Acts, people from over 20 uh, Asian nations are going forth. He's like Brother Srillo. He's not trying to control them. He's not trying to put a branding on them. He just turns them loose. And I was able to minister in uh, several Myanmar schools of ministry that have been inspired. These are six-month institutes where they dedicate themselves night and day to prayer, to spiritual breakthrough and growth, to fine-tuning their vision. Then I was in Nepal, and we had a lunch where the leadership, and they were from primarily from the School of Acts. So it's tremendous, and this is a greater uh, facility. And the other thing they received from the impartation of Brother Srollo is this ingenuity. All right, I'll just tell you because I don't think this will go too far, but, you know, they don't allow building another floor on this building, but they do allow solar power. So how do you have the solar power without a structure? <laughs> Some of you will get it. So the point is those creative ideas come and he is, they had me teach there for a week, and of course, bringing in Brother Srillo into the School of Acts, and they asked me to stay for an additional week there, and I was willing to make that sacrifice. They have the best Indian food, the best Chinese food, the best Malay food, so I was willing to suffer for the Lord. This is his, his sanctuary of glory. This is another one of the great churches, Pastor Daniel Chia, who's raised up. Now, I used to think that the only really consecrated, concentrated Christian places in, Europe, in uh, Asia were uh, the Philippines and Kerala, India, and maybe a little bit Goa, India. But in East Malaysia, there's a tremendous uh, group of people that have, for about the last hundred years, these are the Lunbawang people in Lawas. They are originally headhunters. And I'm testifying today that I was able to keep my head Hallelujah. This 
is a this is an assembly of community leaders. I don't know if you can imagine if the mayor of San Diego and the key city council people and many of the key business people got together and got on their faces and prayed for the young people that they're losing to drugs. Also, so much of their community is leaving. Prayed for their problem. But this, right in a Muslim nation, Malaysia, I mean, officially Muslim. You get privileges if you're a Muslim. These people, uh, the Lun Bawang is one example of the people of Sarawak. They've even instituted Easter as a day off, which is normally they don't. Normally they only get Ayyid al-Fitr or the Muslim holidays off. So it's wonderful to see the power of God expressed congregationally, but also through reaching entire communities through this anointing that gets sent forth from uh, Brother Srillo's life. So uh, from then we went, this is uh, considered the Las Vegas of this part of the Far East, Ginting, and this is helping dedicate a uh, outreach center. This is Pastor Inki Ong, who is a product of Morris Rillo's books and videos and tapes and the Morris Rillo Global Satellite Network, ministering in their uh, Mandarin, I was ministering in their Mandarin uh, congregation, but also we went out to win souls in this area where they have huge casinos and it's an ideal opportunity to reach people, especially when they're down on their luck, especially when they've lost, they've even had to pawn their uh, cigarette case in order to pay for their bet. They're, they're willing to listen, they're ready to listen, hallelujah. So here I am arriving in Pakistan. To my left is uh, Shahzad Sadiq, who's a wonderful servant of God. Uh, Brother Srillo prayed over him in 2003 called him. He's the only one. There are many cases of this where Brother Srollo prophetically would call someone out and bring them up and pray over them. And he just said that impartation changed his life. And he has feeding uh, program schools we have with us. Uh, let's give a blessing to God for Apostle Fernando Garre. Fernando Garre, he has been over there active. Dr. Larry Bergens, he's been over there uh, it's like it's like even uh, Bishop Mike Zeno. It's like the Pakistan. You know, it's the, one of the largest uh, Muslim countries in the world. It's so strategic, bordering right on Afghanistan, and these people face all kinds of things. I'll tell you more later about the humanitarian aid that you have made possible. This is Mama Teresa praying over Shahzad Sadiq. In our ministry, as I've said, we care a great deal about the authority the supernatural, finding those that have not been reached, but also 2 Timothy 1.6, to stir up a gift that is there placed by the laying on of hands. And just imagine, Mama, before going home, that she released, and it was a very lengthy and beautiful prayer. So we prayed that we played that prayer for the people. And then I had some, this is in uh, uh, Govava, or this is Lahore, Pakistan. Many of these leaders are Anglicans, mainline denominations, but they're crying out for the power of God. They're crying out for the breakthrough. And then uh, on to Karachi, and we have, um, uh, of course, soul winning, and of course, uh, prayer for the sick and prayer for the, uh, for the miraculous. And um, let's see if we're handling this correctly. This just take you into one of these one of these events, just a little bit. Jesus, Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. But I believe you can make me righteous. Come into my heart. Wash me in your blood. Come out of her in Jesus' name. Come off of her. Off of her in the name of Jesus. We break your power. See me, may not. See me, may not. See me, may not. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Yes. By the blood of Jesus. Yes. Come out from her. Come out from her in Jesus' name. Come out from her. See me, may not. See me, may not. B'Shem Yeshua Mashiach. Come out from her in Jesus' name. Come out from her in Jesus' name. That's not. Let's see. You have a beautiful God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, and if anybody has 
has hurt her. अगर आपको किसी ने आपको आपको किसी से धोखा लगी किसी ने आपको कोई बेजती की है धोखा लगी है यीशु के नाम में है यीशु से अपने नाम से बात हो गया देख के उसको ले पास कर दो we bring the healing to your heart aapke dil mein shifa aaye we bring you the ability to move forward hum aapko ye barke de ke aap aage badh jaye forward with your life aap apni zindagi ke saath aage badh jaye be so happy aap bahut khush ho you're young aap naujawan hain so many things aap ne bahut se kaam kare hain we old people we would give everything if we could be young again और हमको अगर हमें सारा कुछ भी देना पड़े हम फिर से नौजवान हो जाते तो हम करेंगे सारे पैसे दे देगा ताकि आप कितने नौजवान She is saying she has tumor in the uh, belly and pain at the back. Or you carry it in the body. There was a swelling and there was a pain in the stomach. Now Jesus has given her healing. Hallelujah! It's a miracle. Yeah, Master. 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 How long did you have the tumor? How long did you have the tumor? One month. One month. Break the power. Break the power. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, sir. 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 God gave her the prayer language. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. So Pakistan we're expecting great things and then many of the Pakistani people, you know, up in uh, San Jose area, there are just thousands of them. They're very important in the Gulf in Saudi Arabia all over and uh, so not only reaching the Sunnis and the Shiites but also the more nominal Christians that might have be three or four generation Anglican but uh, you know for them to take hold of the power of god this is a human dynamo this is uh, david sanaratne i think his name was dilhan uh, dr c pronounces his name dilhon so i think that might be one reason he changed his name no no he changed his name to david but uh, he has raised up over 1000 uh, pastors through your Elijah Institute. This was a previous level of technology Greg is taking to the world through the wonderful uh, medium of the internet, but this was back when it was still on CDs and he would put people through training of 6 months. So of course to stop in Sri Lanka, uh, he led the charge for them not to be discouraged about the corruption and bankruptcy in their country, but to hang on and of course the messages of Dr. Srilo are just immortal and speak prophetically right to their 
uh, situation. Then I'm in Dubai, and I don't say Ethiopian because you have the Ethiopians, the Eritreans, the Tigrinians. So I, the, the name you can say is Habesha. Yes, and when I talk about the Queen of Sheba, whom they call Makeda, and how she came and gave the greatest offering to Solomon, but she's the one that left the altar. She didn't even have to get a text or a phone call or a bank transfer. She left there with far more than she had brought. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. But these people, I feel such an awe when I'm with them because they're a people of the Bible. So this was their new year. For them, it's only 2016. So if I look younger, it's because I was with these people. <laughs> Hallelujah. And of course, they love Dr. Strollo. He's raised up so many of them. I was privileged to take him there in, two, in uh, 1998, actually. I took him to Addis Ababa, and I've been there back quite a bit. I wanted to show this because one of Dr. Srillo's prophetic declarations was that there would be a season of peace coming to Israel. And I don't know if you can appreciate, uh, when I saw I'm going to get on an Emirates flight in the United Arab Emirates and fly directly to Israel, that was unheard of. I was totally sure I was going to have to go through Cairo or through Amman. Dr. Srillo did not give a rosy long-term picture, but he said there would be an opening of peace, and I'm cautious, but I, I did want to share this when I saw that it really uh, impacted me. And then here we are in Tel Aviv, the uh, Eritrean people had had an outbreak of violence between them, and uh, it was giving them a bad name in the whole community, so we had an emergency call to prayer, which is what people look to this ministry for. So we had a, a good uh, time together. Dr. Srillo gave his his input, which was, uh, you know, very important. Let's see here. Breathe. We're dealing in Hebrew with these people. So these people are very precious. They're winning a lot of souls and helping... Uh, this is uh, Oren Levari. Your ministry has helped with two big congregational buildings, uh, one in Petah Tikva and one in West Jerusalem. And he's been with our ministry over 15 years. Brother Srolo prophesied over him that he'd have international ministry, and he's now traveling very heavily. Here I am at uh, Tel Aviv again. Lift up your heads, congregation. The pastor, Dairo Jeremiah, was saved uh, in a Morris Srolo meeting. And, uh, of course, they hunger for the word. This is Pastor Dairo and his wife. And there's Dr. Cirillo from the screen declaring uh, the testimony, declaring the proof producer message. And we prayed for the people, of course, and had the testimonies of healing and deliverance. This is another congregation in another part of Tel Aviv uh, before I left for uh, Uganda. And then again, Dr. Cirillo. Now, this is where your ministry did actual hands-on uh, humanitarian aid. And I want to give special thanks also. Do we have people here from the UK, from, uh, from uh, uh, the London office? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, uh, and also they have admitted and thanked us that they got the idea of Brexit from us. Our exit. We exited from them. And so they got the idea. They're going to, you'll get it later on. But anyways... These are not simply ornaments. These are communities where if a mother has hard labor or if someone has an urgent medical need, there's no real way to transport them. Or even if there is, there's no way to lift them up in a wheelchair. So these are fully equipped uh, vehicles. And of course, uh, the king, when he was here, he told us how King Oyo, things are getting dry. So this, uh, this fire engine and your ministry, and here we are. This is our precious pastor, Brian Bolt. He had two great crusades of his own in the Turo Kingdom, and you'll be seeing him again in November. This is Her Majesty the Queen Mother. So that's his mom. That's not his wife. For those of you ladies who are looking for a King and I type of husband. He's still available. And, um, but they were very, very uh, appreciative because this really zeroed in on a need that they have. And I just want to give thanks for David Strill and the partners of this ministry for making this possible because 
when it delivers right at the point of need. And also, these people, even though they're being raised up, they needed, help, they needed uh, concrete help in this area. So here he is, His Majesty King Oyo. He was crowned when he was three, when his father died, and this was also the occasion of his 28th anniversary, and he's a go-getter. I mean, we read in Matthew 5, Jesus went, went up into a mountain. Well, this man went up into a mountain too. This is uh, Mount Renzori, and we're praying that that'll become a big uh, a source of tourism and revenue. And I don't want to get into anything political, but let me just say that Uganda is on the firing line right now because of certain positions that they've taken where they've refused. And I don't want to get into that, except I do love the idea. I mean, wouldn't you rather, instead of going to base camp on uh, Mount uh, uh, Everest, wouldn't you rather go all the way to the top? So here you can go all the way to the top. So please remember the kingdom in your prayers. Then off to Kampala, uh, where at the Vozo Gilgal congregation, Dr. Sorolo, you can see the screen there. The people were just wrapped with attention. And this is where we're starting more and more to connect with our alumni. I had a nice group of uh, alumni from the online school, and Greg and I are coordinating also for your people that your ministry is leading to the Lord that we could have uh, God has a plan for your life follow-up meetings with a lot of these different people in these nations. So if you still have digital uh, ability, why don't we clap for the Lord one time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I knew you could do it. I knew you could do it. This is Pastor Asher. This is, again, we're in Kampala ministry. This is his mom. She's just a fireball. She was an usher in the same uh, school of ministry, 1993, that our apostle spoke of. And so yeah, we had the healings and the miracles. And then I was, uh, did evangelism during the day. Uh, and of course, it was raining, but we learned from Brother Srillo not to consider the rain. And, oh, but the rain, the noise, you got to move a little closer to the people. So we did. And this is uh, uh, Bishop Wojingo. I was very uh, honored to have him translate. He has radio stations. He's an amazing, uh, amazing uh, man of God, amazing servant of God. And um, so then uh, we get to... I like the lady when we're going, wash me with your blood. She's going like that. Hallelujah. She's sprinkling it on generously. Hallelujah. I like that. Praise God. We did some evangelism. Then we went to uh, uh, Ojambo. Jimmy is the manager of a TBN affiliate, uh, Lighthouse Television, so they wanted me to minister to the leaders and pastors. Then I just want you to appreciate, this is your feeding center in Tel Aviv. This is so well-equipped spiritually because they know the Talmud. They're able to reach out in, uh, in, to the religious community, but also to the drug addicts, to the prostitutes, and they're open, and they're, the police and others send people to them. They have, again, this stimulated a lot of volunteers. Here you see Asian people. They want to volunteer. They go to Israel, and they're drawn to this to spend hours preparing the meals and feeding the people and giving out the testimony, including Brother Cirillo's books in Hebrew and Amharic and Russian and Spanish. Oh, I just think those hands are going are gonna to warm up. They're warming up. Hallelujah. Now, God used you for two critical things in Pakistan. If you've been following, there was a terrible flooding months ago, and then there was another recurrence where there was a... Uh, I'll just tell you what it was, actually. In some European countries, they were openly desecrating the Quran, and so people would use that as an excuse to attack and burn churches and burn the Christian neighborhoods. So your ministry is helping them get through this time. We thank you for your support uh, by providing beds, food, mosquito nets, blankets, clothing, so that they can rebuild their lives. Remember, this is not like in the States. In the States, someone house uh, burns down sometimes they pretend to cry but they're thrilled to get the check they'd rather <laughs> have the the check hallelujah yeah this is the building that you were also part of uh, uh handling and then this is one hallelujah yes that's okay those two people 
And this is an example. This is someone that through the Morris Rillo Online School of Ministry became a tremendous church planter. He has a great testimony, and we're in touch with him. So thank you so very much for this uh, opportunity. And then um, what I'd like to do is uh, I'm watching our, you know, uh, Father Time here, our timekeeper. So yo creo que hay unos minutos todavía. Dos minutos. Él dijo solamente dos minutos. Okay, this is uh, Apostle Oscar Venegas. Sí. En dos minutos. In two minutes. Es muy similar el trabajo que estamos haciendo en América. It's very similar what we're doing to what is being done in Latinoamérica. En Latinoamérica. In, in Latin America, yes. Eh, pero quiero poner en sus corazones el estar orando por países que es difícil accesar a ellos. But I want you to put it in your hearts that is uh, accessible to access material. Difficult. Okay, it is difficult to have access to these materials in these different countries where he's, locations where he's been ministering. En el corazón del hermano Don y mío, como equipo, es estar a ir a Venezuela, a Cuba. Yeah, we have in our hearts, myself and Brother Don, to go also to, to for ministry in Venezuela and Cuba. Y algunos países que por el comunismo están empezando a ser difíciles. And some nations, especially due to their communism, are more and more difficult. La segunda cosa que quiero poner en sus corazones the para orar. The second thing I want to put into your hearts to pray. Es la gran migración de latinoamericanos que está llegando a los Estados Unidos en este tiempo. Is the incredible amount of uh, migrants to the United States from Latin America that are coming these days or in this time. En realidad estamos trabajando sobre las pisadas del Dr. Morris Cerullo en Latinoamérica. We are walking through the footsteps of Dr. Morris Cerullo in Latin America. Él edificó fuertemente nuestras naciones. And then he uh, edificó. Oh, yo, he built, did tremendous building up of our nations. Y tenemos puertas abiertas gracias al legado. And thanks to the legacy, we have great open doors. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Sí, hallelujah. Y otra cosa importante. And the other important thing. Estamos viniendo ahora aquí al Centro Delegado. We are coming here to the Legacy Center. Con hijos del Ministerio de Morris Cerullo. Sons of the Ministry of Morris Cerullo. Y tendremos la primera escuela hispana. And we are going to conduct the first Spanish school of ministry. En este lugar. In this location. Respaldada 100% por el Ministerio de Morris Cerullo. Respaldada 100%. Okay, yeah. 100% supported and backed by the Ministry of Morris Cerullo. Donde nuestros anfitriones son Greg, Don, Rubén. Where our hosts are Greg, Don, and Rubén. Y los predicadores son hijos del Dr. Morris. And Morisa all Rubén. the preachers are sons of Dr. Cirillo. Amen. Y yo quiero que ustedes oren por esta escuela. And I want you to pray for that school. 27 y 28 de octubre. The 27th and 28th of October. El 35, 40% de la gente aquí. 37, 35 to 40 percent of the people here habla español o speak sabe Spanish español, o son descendientes de hispanos, or are descended from Spanish people. Y ustedes conocen la necesidad que hay de esto. And you know the requirement that this causes. Así que los, lo pongo en sus corazones. We put it in your heart. Y nos vemos el próximo mes aquí. And we see you next month right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alabado sea Cristo. Amen. Alabado sea el Señor. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Can we just give the Lord a great shout of praise? Hallelujah. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Why don't you just stand up to your feet and just loosen up just a little bit as we prepare to receive the word this afternoon. Are you excited about the word this morning? This morning. Come on. Can somebody just lift up a shout and say breakthrough? Can you shout breakthrough? Come on, let's just stir up the atmosphere just a little bit. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm believing God for a supernatural breakthrough. Come on, tell them, say, I'm believing God for a supernatural breakthrough. You may have to turn this one up just a little bit for me. I need you to clap your hands and bless the Lord. Come on and clap your hands and bless the Lord. Oh, God, we give you glory, Lord. Come on, we come to declare that this is the atmosphere of breakthrough and miracle signs and wonders. Come on, we're going to declare it together. 
We say you are, you are the undefeated one, my life and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Come on, somebody bless God. Whoa. Come on, we say omnipotent, omnipotent. You are Almighty. defender, my victory, my, victory. my, refuge. my refuge, the one I run to. I run say to. you are the God. Shout, you, you are, are the God, God of. The if you know He's the God of the breakthrough, come on, let's lift it up high. Somebody shout, shout breakthrough. You are God of. God of the when I can't see. Bless the Lord. Come on. Hey, we say you are, you are the undefeated one. My life and my salvation. When the wicked, my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Oh, he's got us covered. Oh, we see omnipotent, almighty, defender, my victory. The one I run to, you are the God, you are the God. Come on, let's lift it up high. God, we bless your name. We shout out, shout free through. You are God of when I can't see. Just shout out breakthrough. Come on, can you shout out breakthrough? God, we thank you that it's an atmosphere of miracles, signs, and wonders. We believe you, Lord, for the supernatural. Come on, somebody clap your hands and bless the Lord. Come on. Hey, hey. We bless your name, God. Oh, oh. Come on, we'll declare and say, see, breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, breakthrough in my struggle. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough when I live to glorify your name, breakthrough when I dance, breakthrough when I shout. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough my weakness, you are the God of breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough when I live to glorify your name, breakthrough when I dance, somebody say, come on, clap your hands and say, breakthrough in my heart, breakthrough in my mind, breakthrough in my spirit, breakthrough in my soul, breakthrough in my weakness, you are the God of Worship, break through in my face, break through when I live to glorify, break through when I dance. Come on, somebody lift up a shout of praise. Shout. You are the God of when I can't see my how do we know you're there? No one will it Somebody say every wall must fall. So I'm gonna praise you are the God. Come on, one more time. We 
say breakthrough in my heart breakthrough in my mind breakthrough in my spirit breakthrough in my soul breakthrough in my weakness breakthrough in my struggle you are the god you are the god of the breakthrough in my worship breakthrough in my praise breakthrough when i live to glorify your name breakthrough when i dance breakthrough when i shout you are the god you are the god of the breakthrough in my heart breakthrough in my mind Somebody say that takes you past the point of resistance. Is there anybody ready for some advanced knowledge this morning? Because I declare there is a prophet of God in the house that is here on assignment, one of the most gifted, unique communicators of the Word of God that I have ever known in all my life, a very dear friend of Morris, Teresa, David, Susan, Jerry, I, the ministry. This is no stranger. The senior pastor of one of the largest churches in the United States, like Io Ritzajafor, not having a church in Lagos. He has this huge church in this city that's out in the middle of nowhere. Pastor Steve Muncy, not in Chicago, but he's out in Munster, Indiana. His church has more people than the city, over 15,000 people. I've been there. They have to have two midweek services on a Wednesday night just to get the people in the building. We are so honored, I believe, that we are going to receive some advanced knowledge that's gonna take us past the point of resistance this morning. I want you to join me, Facebook, YouTube, Legacy. Come on, give a great welcome, give honor to whom honor is due. There is nobody like our friend, Pastor Steve Muncy. Come on, give him a good God bless you as he comes.
Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Let me look at you. Everybody stand up. All you that are tired, stand up just for a moment. All that you, all of you that can't stand, you'll be healed in this service. So sweet. Let me look at you. Let me look at you. Let me look at you. You're all so beautiful. The most impressive thing is, is that you've been so faithful to MC, more Cirillo, it's anointing. Many of you, how many have been to this? You've been faithful for the last 20 years. Lift your hands. Let me just see your hands. Look, 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 look. Everybody turn around. Look, look at all the, over 20 years, these are, these, look at these, look at all these 20 year people. Wow. How many have been with us for 10 years, uh, over 10 years, over 10 years? That's great. Turn around and tell somebody, we are a unique bunch. Say that. We are a unique bunch. Let me look at you. Yes, all of you. Oh, let me look at you over here, over here. Yeah. You know, your faces, your faces from city to city, from Orlando to downtown San Diego to all the places we've been your faces I, I see you I've seen you I've, uh, there were, a couple years ago some of you didn't like me but you then started liking me I, I know I could tell I could tell I could tell when I first came you said where in the world did he where did he come from more Cirillo has lost his mind and then you started loving me and you started, and we started this journey to lift up the hands. Lift your right hand, say these words, say, oh Lord. This is a very special week. I know your hand is lifted. Keep your eyes open, it's all right. Monday was atonement. Now listen to these words before I ask you to repeat this prayer. Remember the hand up. Remember there are eight days after atonement called Sukkot. This is when the rapture takes place. We don't know the day or the hour, but this is the week. We repented for 10 days. God opened up the books on atonement. And this is the rapture week. Are you looking for him? And not, now if you're not looking for him, He's not coming after you. For Hebrews 9, chapter 28, verse says, Unto them that look for him shall he appear. You got your hand up in the air? Now lift your eyes up to the ceiling and say, Oh, Lord, if you was to come, I'm ready to go. Now look, you have to practice your shout. Bring your hand down now. Wait, 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 wait. You're already ready. The Bible said he will descend in a shout, meaning we're going to go up in a shout. So you better practice because you're going to have a fifth of a second when the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise up. And the only one that's going to beat you in the rapture is Teresa and MC. They get to go out first. And we that are remaining are going to go up in a shout. When I count to three, you could say hallelujah, amen. You can do whatever you want. But I want you to practice your shout. One, two, three. Wow. 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 Hallelujah. Lord. Now turn to somebody you haven't spoke to, because now you're a Christian by now, and, uh, since being through John. And thank God that John walked through the mud and you didn't. That's what he saw. Don, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. The D's and the J's, I get mixed up all the time. So I want you to turn to somebody and say, something is going to happen to you. In the next 40 minutes. Say that, say that, say that. Say that. Thank you, sir. You may 
be seated. I know that David Cirillo is watching, and David, we love you very much. The responsibility of your father and the anointing and Legacy Center. Stay right there, gentlemen. I want to give you a compliment, if you allow me to. Um, you can play, because I sound better when somebody plays. I want to compliment uh, David Cirillo. I want to compliment the team for carrying and shouldering this legacy. And I know that David, we're praying for him. And God's going to do great things. And I want to say thank you because I believe that the Lord is directing him. It's not hard. I, I should say it's a hard thing. doesn't matter if you're the son or the daughter to follow more Cirillo. Teresa would tell you that. The family would tell you that. And I'm so uh, gracious. I don't know where she's at today. Um, Susan, Susan, wherever you are, I just want you to know thank you for hosting, being kind to all of these incredible people. Susan. I'm sure she's busy somewhere. And besides, she doesn't like my preaching, so she kind of hangs out somewhere else. And she's afraid she'll get saved, I guess. I don't know. I love Susan. She's a preacher's kid and known her for many years. I also want to say that uh, before I give you the word in the next 42, 43 minutes, I want to tell you that I appreciate not only David allowing the passion and the heart of someone that has walked beside him around the world to carry on and to say, I won't quit. I'm going to continue to do the vision even after you go to heaven, Dr. Cirillo and Teresa. And that is Greg. I'd like for you to stand and give him a great big hand. Clap him and Jerry. I don't know where Jerry's at. But... Yeah, do it. Yeah, do it. Give him some love. It's all right. You don't get paid enough for this job, so it's all right. Let it, let the love flow. Thank you, Greg. You may be seated. That's, write him a card. Say thank you. It's, 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 uh, it's very hard to do what he's doing. And everybody needs to know he's not trying to be more Cirillo. Number one, he can't be. Number two, he's too tall. Number three, he don't have the same anointing as Dr. Srolo. But he is carrying the mantle and the vision to help David and this organization. And let me teach all of you that are in ministry, we all desire the pulpit. We all want to be first. We all want to preach. We all want this. But some of the most important people on this planet are people who support, who are the assistant, who are the second person. It's, it's very interesting to me that God told Moses, you don't go in the holy place. I'm going to let, let your brother go into the holies of holies. Second are just as important as first. And when you understand that, and many of you are called into that position, don't fight for first place. First place will probably kill you. Second place is what saves you. And you're just as important as first place. So don't get into the title thing that the pulpit is the most important thing. There, there are ministries that have to be in place like Aaron. It's not the Moses. And you may not be recognized as second, third in your category of ministry. And you may be in parachurch thinking, but you are very important. And don't ever uh, underestimate who you are. Just because your name's not on the sign or not on the church or not on the organization does not mean you are not important. Because the name on a building or a sign doesn't make you anointed. You are anointed to do your work. And if nobody pats you on the back, 
it doesn't matter because the pat can't anoint you and the ovation can't anoint you and the paycheck can't anoint you but if God be for you oh somebody talk to me right there if God be for you it's a good thing I want to thank the television crew I want to thank them I know you're back there I know you're watching me you're in that little room back there and I know you're guiding these cameras so there's one two three four God bless you we thank you that you're back there be spiritual. Quit talking and eating popcorn while I'm preaching. Make sure you get these cameras right. Give them a great big hand. They're in the back room back there. <laughs> Sir, you're pretty, you're anointed. You're anointed. Now don't look, don't go out here and drink pop and wait on me to get to the end. You sit right here. Because you can't play right at the end unless you hear what I got to say. You know, sometimes we play music and we feel God. Then we walk away. And we're good javelin throwers when we walk away, when the music stops. If you don't believe it, when David stopped the music, Saul threw javelins. Music does not create the power of anointing. It only creates his presence. And when you bring people in his presence, that's where delivery is. And you do very good to do that. Don't play games with it. You can become as demon-possessed as was you come God-possessed. And I want to compliment you for doing what you did today. And I want to tell you that God is with you. Give him a great big hand. And I know you're a great songwriter. You're incredible. Good guitar. I want to thank my grandson. He's in the booth. Malachi Muncie. You'll be hearing about him in the next 30 years if the Lord don't tarry. He'll be very famous. His name is Malachi Muncie. He's 19. He's back there. He's going to help me today. And... Uh, You'll be hearing about him. And you'll say, oh, I heard I know, Malachi. Oh, Malachi. Oh, Malachi. So I want to say thank you that he is helping me today. Thank you very, very much for making that music happen because I needed that. And I appreciate it so very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm turning your attention to the book of Joel because it is the whole description of what is taking place in the next 42 minutes that's going to happen. And I've come to blot this time out only to add to Bishop John Francis and to Perry Stone. And if I leave somebody's name out, please forgive me, Greg and Dawn, all of you that have been ministered to already this week. So I am going to add another step, but I have come, I have come with a prophetic word and the only people that are supposed to hear this is you. And for you that are watching, just you and no one else. This is a word in which I believe is relevant, and I believe, and I mean this uh, with everything that is within me, and I'm not just saying it to say it. Everybody that is hearing this word today, I want you to note that something Huge. I know we always say that. I always know we always speak with great faith. But there's something about this season, this week, and in the next few days if the Lord tarries, and if we make it to past Tuesday, which is Sukkot, God told his people to get outside. That's why if you go to Jerusalem, everybody's outside. Everybody eats outside. Simply because... He told the people, I want to remind you what I did when I led you out of Israel. I led you by a fire at night and a cloud by day. And right now, all Jews in the world are eating outside. They're celebrating these eight days from atonement. For us, the body of Christ under the new covenant, we are to have the same expectation to look up because this is the season he will come. Some of you are startled by that because you immediately want to fast forward in your thinking traditionally to say, but I've been taught all of my life, no man knows the day or the hour. And that's a fact. Could never tell you that today he's coming because today is different than Japan. This hour that we're here in San Diego is different than Chicago. It would be stupid. It would be foolish to say this day, this hour. But then Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, he says, Brethren, you know the seasons. 
I didn't get enough amens. Maybe you missed that part, but let me read it for you. Brethren, you know the seasons. And he tells you, he says, he comes as a thief in the night. He's referring to Rosh Hashanah that happened a few days ago because those are the two darkest days on the calendar year. Rosh Hashanah, which means ahead of a new year. In other words, you and I live by a Gregorian calendar, but God lives by the biblical calendar, which started now whatever Rosh Hashanah, which was on the 14th or the 15th of this month. And Monday was 10 days later, atonement. We're still in the Feast of Tabernacles. There is no doubt. Isn't it wonderful that God makes it very simple? And just because, just because, People of religion or people of, 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 of rightly dividing the word of God have taken segments of it and begin to subdivide the six principles of the doctrine of Christ according to Hebrews 6 and specialize either in repentance or baptisms or laying on of hands and they can do that. But truthfully, but truthfully, the fact is, is that He's coming back in one of his seasons. In the, the fact is, is that Passover has already been fulfilled. Pentecost has already been fulfilled. The Feast of Tabernacles have not yet been fulfilled. This is the blowing of the trumpets. This is the judgments. This is, this is the time in which he said, I'm going to come back. And he's very simple. He teaches us, you better get your act together. He says, on the day of Rosh Hashanah, on the very first day of the first month, blow the trumpet. Repent for 10 days. I'll make the decision on the day of atonement. On the day of atonement, he made man. We just celebrated just, just a day or so ago, the birthday of the earth. And so on the day of atonement Monday, he made man. On the day of atonement, he shut the door of the ark and destroyed the world. On the Day of Atonement is when Job got everything back double. On the Day of Atonement, Jesus was born. Yeah, I know that messes you up. I know. I said, oh, my God, I was going to have a Christmas 25th, and you just messed it up. Well, let me help you. He never did say celebrate my birthday. He never did say recognize my birthday. The only thing he did say for us to recognize is don't forget what I did for you at Calvary. And as often as you do this, you take Holy Communion in remembrance of me. He was only interested in what his atonement was and his salvation. So don't get stressed out about the fact that the 25th is not really his birthday. You can still go shopping, still put up a tree and, and have a great time. Doesn't matter to him. But in fact, he was born according to Revelation 12. I can tell you the exact zodiac sign that was in the sky. He was born at 715 on September 11th in 3 BC. Excuse me if you haven't studied as much as I have. Just kind of believe. And, and you go down the road of being scholastic. You will find yourself being engulfed with this information to say, wow. That's the reason why Paul said, be not ignorant of the seasons. And so we're here today to tell you, hey, Jesus could come back. But the select group of you people, listen to me as I exhort to you in these moments to tell you that I believe that you people, the more Cirillo people have followed his anointing, I'm going to tell you what I believe all of you are. I believe you have the anointing of the sons of Issachar. I believe this tribe, there are many tribes. There is, a, there is the T.D. Jakes', T. T. D. Jakes tribe. There's the, you know, his daughter's tribe. There is the Charles Stanley tribe. There is the, these are all great people. John Hagee tribe. There is the Benny Hinn tribe. You know, there's the fire tribe. There is the scare the hell out of you. The horsemen are coming by John, Ev John Hagee and... We need all of that. No, no, we need it. I'm, I'm, I'm making light. But the fact is, you must have all of those in the body of Christ together to reach people. Some people are reached by fear. Some people are reached by love. Some pe to reach people, God uses all of these. There's no criticism in, in any of these great ministries of Billy Graham and, and all of these great people. But I want to tell you that I believe, excuse me if I'm forward into taking this liberty to tell you that I believe the tribe of Mor Cirillo is the tribe of the sons of Issachar. 
and that you are anointed. Everybody say me. Now help you if you skip the part of the sons of Issachar and say, well, I didn't, I skipped over that part. I, I don't, can you refresh my memory? Because I'm sure I've read it in the Bible. Of course, I will refresh your memory and excite you for who that know about the sons of Issachar. And the fact is this, is that the sons of Issachar, the Bible says, God gave them understanding of the times so that they could tell Israel what to do. So I'm going to tell you, you have the responsibility that God has given you understanding of the times of what the body of Christ should do. So you can pray and you can break breakthroughs upon cities and, and God will use you in your neighborhoods and in your businesses. I believe that. I believe that the tribe of Morcerillo's group and the following and all of you that are watching and all of you that are today, that you are the people of the sons of Issachar. You will pray new presidents in. You will pray new congressmen in. You may never, ever, ever, ever get recognition, but who you are, you are a giant in your city. You are a, you are a massive destroyer of demons in your city. You You need to know that people may pass you and may not know your name, but who you are, you're powerful where you come from. And that when you pray, your prayers are answered because God has given you the spirit of the sons of Issachar to understand how to write songs, how to pray, how to believe God. And quit saying that America's going to hell in a handbasket. That's our responsibility to say over my dead body. Because on my watch, it's not going to hell. We will run the devil out of business. I need one good amen somewhere in this house that believes in the name of Jesus. And quit complaining about your leadership because you don't pray for it. And quit complaining about all the killings and all of the sins and all the transgenders and all the stuff. That's our fault. Somebody needs to tell us who we are. Somebody needs to remind us greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody needs to know that when you pray, you shake every tree in your city. When you pray, you shake the foundations of the, of the buildings in your city like Apostle Paul did when the foundations of the jail were shaken and the doors came open because they knew how to pray and they knew how to praise. So don't sit idly by. Keep your mouth shut. Let the devil know today. I know who I am. I'm here on purpose. Don't mess with me. Go to hell. Because God's about to give us heaven. Somebody shout an amen and an amen and an amen. So let me quickly bring you to what I believe that God is doing. Sir, you had not moved all service. You need the baptism. Oh, this is... This is a fake guy. I was wondering how he could not keep from clapping his hands on the breakthrough song. He's staring right at me, and I stare right back at him. And I prayed the Holy Ghost in him. This is a dummy. This is, this is a mannequin. But you do look good. So Joe teaches us some things about what's going to happen in the next few days. And when you read the second chapter of Joel, you, you will be, find yourself knowing that God is doing things because the Bible says these words, be glad you children of the Lord in Zion, the 23rd verse in the second chapter. He said, I will give you the former rain and I will give you the latter rain in the first month. That happened on Rosh Hashanah, September 14th, 15th. God switched seasons. Notice that the fourth quarter is for you that are in business and handle 
funds. The fourth quarter and the first quarters are better than the second and the third quarters. For the Bible says, he says, be glad ye children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he hath given you the former rain moderately. Moderate blessings happen from Passover to atonement or to Feast of Tabernacles. That's, that's moderate. So in the last six months, if you have been blessed and you said, you know, I've been blessed, but, you know, it's not like, you know, well, then get ready. Just a few days ago, God just doubled up. You're living in the double portion. You read a little further, the Bible talks about what he's going to do. The Bible says, you'll not, you'll not be ashamed of me in the next six months. If you read it, it's so inspiring when he says, on the first day of the first month, I'm going to put double portion. He goes on and says things like this. He says, I'm going to restore to you the years that the locust eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army, which I send among you. Meaning that just a few days ago, God packed your house, your car, Wherever you go with bodyguards of specialists that are going before you. Sorry, God, you didn't get an amen on that. I was hoping that they would love that. There are angels charged around you. said, I send an army with you. That happened just a few days ago. And then it goes on to say, and he said, whatever has been taken from you, this army that I send is going to help you get it back. Then, next verse. This is right now. This is not futuristic. Next verse, he says, you shall eat plenty. You shall be satisfied. Praise the name of your God. For he had dwelt wondrously with you. And listen to what God says. And my people will never be ashamed. I'm sorry, God. I, did, I, I only got about 40%. I apologize. Let, I, didn't, I didn't read it right. Let, I'm going to read it again so you can hear the people get excited about this. I will deal wondrously with you, and you will not be ashamed that I am your God. Listen to him, God. That's good. Very good. Your response is really great. It shall come to pass that afterwards I'll pour out my spirit. Now watch what happens between September and May. I'm just giving you a few tiblets and you do your own studying on your own time. Because it takes years and prayer and seeking God. This is all free for you. You will notice that the Bible says I will pour out my spirit upon sons and daughters. That's the next part. Our children go to school from September to May. They are pro-seeing their future or prophesying. Bible said they should prophesy. They're pro-seeing, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to be a fireman, I'm going to be be a, a doctor. That's what they're going to school, young, old. Notice it's in the double portion of the season of September to May. That's when God speaks, that's when God delivers, that's when God breaks the powers over your children. That's when God begins to show wonder in the sky and God begins to do incredible things. Two nights before Rosh Hashanah, there was a UFO that appeared over the Dome of the Rock. It spread viciously upon the internet. Nobody knows what it was. It was an unidentified object. I don't know what it was. But the Bible said he'll show wonders. Things will happen. I dare you to go out tonight and just look at the sky. If you look at it for an hour, you'll see things happen and say, what was that? What was that? What what, what was that? What what was was that? Because God is moving the heavens at this very moment. So we are in the midst. Let 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 me bring it a little closer and then I'll entertain you and I'll get all of you that are about to go to sleep. I'll wake you up in just a minute. And I'll bring it home. You're so sweet. I'm so rough, but you're so sweet. I'm not as rough as MC. No, 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 no. Did you like that for years? Remember that motion? 
You don't believe it. I'm getting pretty good. I'm getting pretty good at that. You know, so. This is startling to me because, because God repeats patterns. The Old Testament is nothing but testimonies and actually showing how God operates. And then the New Testament, he tells us, and then you put them together, and you begin to see the patterns, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is startling to me. After all the years of ministry, I did not know this till on the day of Rosh Hashanah. And when this knowledge went into my spirit, man, I just, I just, I never heard this before. I never heard anybody. I started calling. I called Perry. I, I called some other theologians about, what is this? I dove into the truth to find exactly if it was true or not. That 1,948 years after God created man, that on the day, actually on the day of the head of the year of Rosh Hashanah, a man named Abram was born. 1,948. You do your own studying. Go on, go on Google. You know how to run a, uh, a computer. Just put in Abraham 1948. And it will alarm you on the history that before or after man B.C., that Abraham was born on Rosh Hashanah in 1948 B.C. Am I confusing you? Immediately you're trying to go to 1948 A.D. No, 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 no. We're, we're, this, is, this is 1,948 years after he created man. This is how precise God is. 75 years later, he calls that man out of the Chaldeans, out of Babylon, and says, I'm going to give you Canaan's land, which is a type of rapture, a calling out. That was in 2023 before Christ. Now, let's get to the fast track here because most of you know the Bible and some of you that don't act like you know the Bible, just act like you do. Just, just say, I do read the Bible. Just Please, just go along with me. It would make me feel better that you sometimes read the Bible instead of stare at me like, I never heard it before. Good. Well, read the Bible. Okay? This, this is powerful. In 2023, before Christ, God called him out. Okay? Now, I'll refer to this before I close today for the anointing to come upon you. He called Abraham out. I'll refer to him in just a few minutes exactly what happened to Abraham when he came out, which is going to happen to everyone that will hear this word today that's startling. Amen. I started this message out by telling you something big is about to happen. 1,000 years later to the date on May 14th, after 2,000 years that Israel had not been back into the Holy Land of Palestine or Jerusalem, 1948 A.D., 1,000 years later to the date, Israel becomes a nation. You can't make this up. 75 years later, which is now 2023, on Rosh Hashanah, God marked time. Oh, you can't make this up. Something is getting better. Either the rapture is going to take place or God is getting ready to move you out of the way because you're in the way. Or he's getting ready to do something because you are in the right spot at the right time. And there is a gully washer of an out that Hollywood is going to be shocked 
You hear me? David Cirillo, every media person in the world is going to be shocked. Because when God called Abraham out, something is about to happen, and if he doesn't come by next Tuesday, now some of you don't want him to come because it messes up your schedules to go to Disney World and the cruise and you got a vacation planned. There's nothing wrong with any of that, but you better get your minds focused because the end is here. And I know we've been talking about that, and all of my life I have heard Jesus is coming, but ladies and gentlemen, don't be a part of the falling away. And may I break for a moment to tell you, did not the Bible said there would be a great falling away? And could COVID-19 been that falling away? Because 50% of the church has still not come back. And God is not going to sneak in the back door of the earth and sneak us out of here and say, let the whole world go to hell. I loved you all. So I'm going to sneak in and I'm going to get you out in this rapture. I bid to differ that before the rapture takes place, the power of God is going to shake every single city. The showdown has begun. And you are here on assignment, and many of you did not know the exact assignment. But in the next 28 minutes, something is going to happen to you in your mind. And every city that is represented within this constituency and every person that is watching, there's going to be a signal like an atom bomb going to explode out of you. It's going to flow the anointing down every street. It's going to flow down to every school. It's going to flow down every neighborhood. I need a shout from somebody that will say, I believe. Unbelievable things are going to happen to every one of you. And some of you have not had the great miraculous of wonders, but it's going to blow your mind. Probably before next Tuesday, but if, if we make it past next Tuesday, if there's no rapture by next Tuesday, then you better hang on. And for every one of you that have just a little doubt, so sad that you couldn't pull up and stir yourself and quit waiting for God or a prophet or somebody to slap you or lay hands on you and prophesy over you. In the book of Peter, it says, you stir yourself up. Quit waiting on somebody to give you a word. Stir up the gift. Anybody got a gift inside of this? Shout a great big amen. Stir it up. Stir it up. Passover's already been fulfilled. It's amazing to me that after 3,000 years, Passover's on a certain date. It's just ironic to me that Jesus died exactly on the day of Passover. Not two weeks later, three weeks later, four weeks before. Exactly. It's remarkable to me that 50 days later, which Pentecost means 50, and that Moses went up to the mountain and got the Ten Commandments and the fire was there, going up in fire. And then on the day of Pentecost, they went up and the fire fell. And the church started exactly on the day of Pentecost. Not a week before, not a week later. Honey, if you think I'm making up something to try to stir your emotions, I'm past your emotions. 
I'm way past your emotions of what you think or what you want to think. I'm past what your brain is going on. I'm dealing with something on the inner man that's saying, he's right. You better listen to what he's saying. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking past your money. I'm talking past your schedules. I'm talking to past your anxiety and your worries. I'm getting ready for you not to be ashamed of who I am. And I'm going to raise you up like a mighty army. And there is going to be great anointing upon your life. So let me, let me hurry here. Uh, let's talk about this season. Let's, let's talk about this season because it's, it's the rapture season. Here's the Ark of the Covenant. Here's the showbread. Here is the altar prayer. Dave, is this all right? Susan, is this all right? Is it all right, God? Oh, thanks. Greg, this is the altar of incense. This is the veil here, the veil. This is in front. <laughs> this is in front of this. This is baptism. In front of that is an altar. In front of this is an altar. So to get in there, you got to put something on the altar. And everybody's always trying to sneak around because the altar is always bigger than the ark. The altar is always bigger than the ark. And everybody's trying to sneak around being anointed to get around the altar, you never get around the altar. And then you get baptized, you wash your, you wash your hands in the water, mix with your sacrifice. Then you walk into the holy place. All of you are allowed to go there. On this side, they got it right here. This side is the showbread. That's the word of God. This side is the menorah or the light. Watch. You want to see something? Sit down. You get tired. Everybody sit down just for a second. I know you want to stand, but the people behind you, they'll go to sleep on me. So I don't want to see them. Notice that the man on the right side saw the light of the world and said, remember me. Man on the left side rejected the word. Did you miss that part in the Bible when Jesus died and the man on the right side said, could you remember me? Because he could see the light. But the man on the left rejected the word. See how God operates? Nothing's out of sequence. Before, before you can get into the ark, of course, you, 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 have to, you have to make sure that the Holy Spirit and all these are lit. You, you know the wicks? Do you, you see the wicks? You know what they're made out of? Because God required that the ministers of that day wear the most expensive clothes of any person. More than Jay-Z. More than Taylor Swift. more than Tom Ford, made the minister wear the most expensive jewelry. And we pay our sports stars three and four hundred million dollars a year. And we treat our preachers like they're trash. And they're between you and heaven to give you you. And listen, we pay performers 
three and four hundred and two and three million dollars a night to perform. And we hand a preacher a stupid check and don't value. You have to value the ministry. You know what God said? God said, when that man gets done with his clothing, I want you to cut it up and I want it to become the wicks of the menorah. Got to make sure the bread's fresh. It's the word of God. Then right before you get into the ark, help me, Malachi, help me. You can go now. You got to take, watch, whatever offering you put on the altar because God lit the fire and the only way you can keep the fire going is keep giving to it. You reach in and grab the coals and walk in right before the veil and you pour it and make incense because nobody can get in the presence of God unless there's smoke and there's incense which is a type of praise and worship smoke is going up all of you today made smoke every time you clap your hands every time you say hallelujah every time you sing the songs of Zion smoke fills the atmosphere and God will allow you into his presence. Now, once a year, the Day of Atonement, just last Monday, under the Old Testament, to go into the Ark of the Covenant, the priest in this case, which was Aaron, would disrobe and become a white tunic, and they would put ropes on his legs. He had bells on the bottom of his tunic, so that when he moved, you could hear dingling, a dingling, a dingling, a dingling, dingling. It would be dark back there. He would take all of the people's sacrifice and bring it down into a censer of blood. As he prepared himself, once a year he would go back to the holies of holies. It was dark. The only thing that he could see was the blowing of the coals that was in one hand and the blood in the other. Ropes were tied upon his ankles because the people on the outside would hold on because he would have to sprinkle the ark seven times on the day of atonement. If God accepted, he lived. If God did not accept it, he died and they would pull him out. You might have missed that part. You can go back, you can read it for yourself. It's a fact. Don't you know that that priest was pretty much, Aaron, or whoever the high priest was, was pretty much scared. Hello? Because he wasn't going back there for himself. He was going back there for you. Let me break it down to you. If Jesus had not come and died and been our atonement and we were still living under the old covenant, let me tell you as a pastor of 20,000 people or more, that's what they say, 22, 23,000 people. You know what I'd be doing on Sunday mornings? I'd be at the door saying, bring your 1099s. Because I'm going to make sure you pay your tithes. Because if you think I'm going back there for you, and you lie to me, you're crazy. When they brought their sacrifices, those priests checked the teeth and the legs. I'm not going back there. You just tip God and just anything you want to do. Well, God told me to do this and God, said, hey, shut up. This is my life. Are you going to do what the word says? Because I'm not going back there to get killed for you. All of you looking at me like, ooh. Aren't you glad that Jesus died and praise God be to God, huh? Yeah, you all ought to be happy now. Watch. The Day of Atonement, just this last Monday. God said, I want you to go back there and I want you to put the blood on there. Now, there's a reason seven times. And some, sometimes he would go back there three times a day and do it seven times. 
He was scared to death, hoping that people had not lied and they had repented. There's a couple things that bothered God. One was when the blood is sprinkled on that ark, and I know it's beautiful in a moment. I'll show you something as I close here in just a few moments that it didn't look this pretty. It was gold like that, but it was bloody. It was full of blood. It was so bloody. It would, it would astound you of the blood that was sprinkled upon the ark. There was one thing that God said, if you sprinkle it on it seven times, I will move the sins of the people a year in advance because I can't forget what they have done wrong because there's no good enough blood from lambs, bullocks, turtle doves, ram's blood that can get me in a position to wipe out, to remit sin to never to be remembered again. So listen to me closely. Worshipper. How do you think Satan got in that day and the sons of God when he went before God, which happened to be on the Day of Atonement, if you study it, when God said, when the angel said, he's here. And God met with the sons of God with celestials of tens of tens of tens of billions of angels in the cathedral of heaven. And Satan showed up. He was not invited, but he thinks he's a son of God because he's the father of all lies. You know how he got into that place? Listen to me, worship leader. He worshiped. Because you can't get in the presence of God unless you worship. But he's a devil cast out. The devil knows you can get in his presence if you worship. You remember when the man that was demon possessed come into Jesus and Jesus gets out of the boat. What does the Bible say? The demon possessed worshiped him before Jesus cast him out. You have demon possessed people who go to church that know how to worship, but they are bound by the devil. And God allows him in his presence. And the only way Satan got in there was on the day of atonement. He worshiped his way to the throne and God had a conversation with him and said, have you noticed my servant Job? That was on the day of atonement because Satan is the accuser of the brethren. There are three books that are open last Monday. Still today, the book of righteousness, the book of the wicked. David said, oh God, do not put my name out of the book of righteous into the book of wickedness. Judgment is always on the day of atonement. And the accuser of the brethren brought their sin and he accused every person. And God always desired that there could be some kind of mechanism that he could create. that he would not have to remember a sin when somebody said, forgive me, God. And for 4,000 years, the only thing God could do is let the man go back there. And the Bible said when he went back there, I see him now in the darkness. The ropes are on his ankles. He has the blood getting ready to sprinkle. The coals, they can barely, barely, barely. He can barely see in the holies of holies. He starts sprinkling that blood. And he gets to about the sixth time. He knows on the seventh time he will either die or live. But if he lives, that means that God is going to put double portion upon Israel. God is going to move their sins forward. He can't forget. The Bible says, if you read it closely, when that priest did it the seventh time, he came out of there like a wild man shouting. They had a white donkey, which was like a Rolls Royce in that day. They put him on that white donkey and he rode through the cities of the tribes of Israel. 
When they saw that high priest on that white donkey, they tore limbs off. And they quoted the middle of the Bible of Psalms 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I beseech thee, O Lord, send now prosperity. And when they saw that man on the white donkey, he has accepted our sacrifice. You remember Jesus. He came out of the tomb. Remember Mary was the first one that recognized who he was. She tried to touch him. He said, don't touch me. Don't touch me. But then a few verses later, he tells Thomas, put your hand on my side. Put it where the nail was. What's the difference? Because the Bible said that Jesus said to her, I have not yet ascended to my father. Why? Because there is a real ark of the covenant in heaven right now. The cherubims are 12 foot tall. They're on either side. This is the mercy seat. This is where Jesus sits. And the cherubims who have four heads of a lion and an ox and a face of a man and an eagle. Read it in Revelations 24 hours a day. Holy, holy, holy. Join in with me. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. You may be seated for a moment. All of a sudden, when Jesus said to Mary, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Why? Because I got to go to the Golgotha Hill. I got to get all the blood that came out of my body. I'm headed for Pontius Pilate's Hall where they beat me and put stripes upon my back and pulled my intestines out of my body. I got to get the blood up because I'm headed for the real Ark of the Covenant. And I'm going to sprinkle my blood on the real Ark of the Covenant. And when he sprinkled it, my God, I feel like shouting, God said, it is God. If you have never shouted, practice right now and shout. That's good. Thank you. And now Jesus, when God accepted his blood, said, son, sit down on the right hand of power in between the two angels while they sing, song director, a new song. Worthy is the lamb. But ladies and gentlemen, his blood doesn't move your sins forward. Oh, I'm going to make you shout whether you've ever heard this or not. But what God was doing is he's pushing all of sin. Since the day of Adam, he was pushing it toward Golgotha. Because Golgotha, the skull, the son of God, John 3, 16, would be manifested that his blood, oh my God, would not only cover your sins, but God would remember no more your sin. Sit down just for a second, just for a second. Thank you guys. There's something going on there, I don't know. You guys getting ready to be anointed. Get, get ready, God. Get ready to be just, not, not yet, not yet. I'll tell you when.
Everybody thinks that Jesus laid in the grave for three days. But Peter said he got up. He went all the way back to Adam. And everyone that ever believed in him in the Old Testament, he put his own blood all the way back to Adam before he went into the belly of the earth. And his blood under the new atonement that when we ask him to forgive, the Bible said he doesn't remember anymore. Listen closely. I'm just going to do this. And you need to hear this is a commercial. This is free. Be careful when you talk about other people's sin. God might have forgiven and he doesn't remember anymore. And he listens to your conversation and doesn't know what you're talking about and will curse you because the seventh thing God hates is so in discord among brethren. It is an abomination. I don't know about you. I'm so glad we're living on this side of Calvary. Somebody shout amen. It's 1923. Don't worry. I got a plane to catch. And services three to preach to tomorrow. But I'm going to give you a word. Let me break it down to you just a little bit stronger where we are. Paul is begging for, he's begging for an audience with Agrippa in the 26th chapter of Acts. Phoenix is the governor of the region of Caesarea. For two years, Paul has been in prison and Festus has really protected Paul because the brethren and religion, everybody listen, religion tried to kill Paul. Read it for yourself. The man who turned up the world, up, or he turned the world upside down, supposedly he was four foot nine, supposedly he had a high pitched voice. It was not a pleasant speaking voice. And he had, some say, he had epilepsy. He had prayed for the epilepsy to leave him, but he said, three times I asked it to go away, but it was nothing but the devil to stick me and to keep me and to buffet me. So every time he preached, he preached, oh God, don't let me have a spell of epilepsy before the people. I'm talking about a man that can raise the dead. I'm talking about a man that the Bible said turned the whole world upside down and didn't have one computer, one jet plane, one train, one electricity. Wrote most of the New Testament was a killer at first, but God knocked him off the horse and saved him. And now God has spoke to him, said, you're going to go to Rome and you're going to witness to Caesar. It's amazing to me that Peter and Paul, when they had their differences in the 15th chapter of Acts, they both ended up in the same city. And they both died in the same city. I wonder if Paul and Peter, no doubt, got it back together with one getting his head cut off and the other one being crucified upside down. He waits two years. He knows he's going to go to Rome. Festus sends down to Paul and says, I finally got an audience with King Agrippa. He's coming such and such day. I want to tell you, Paul, I don't believe that what they've said about you is true. I'm not going to let them kill you. If I get King Agrippa to agree with me, then we can send you to Rome on a ship under the rule and under the authority of a centurion called Julius. Paul comes up after two years. Listen, it happens to be in the time of the Feast of Tabernacles. The Bible says that King Agrippa, all the pomp and all the circumstances, reads for your Bible, says pomp, everybody, all the bodyguards, everything. You know, you can imagine big, big, big king. Paul's in chains and King Agrippa says to him, what do you have to say for yourself, sir? I love what Paul said. I think 
myself happy. I think myself happy. So whatever hell you're going through, tell your brain, I'm still happy. Because the outcome is going to be great. King Agrippa is so moved by Apostle Paul in chains. The King Agrippa stands up. He's a vile. Read his life. He's horrible. Sexually, he's out of control. A gluttony of a drunkard, he's out of control. Politically, he's a mangled mess, Agrippa is. He's the worst of the worst sinners of politicians. He stands to his feet and points his finger at Apostle Paul after 45 minutes of dissertation. And says, thou almost persuaded me to be just like you. And I want to tell everybody in this room, you better get ready for the next few days. The people you can come in contact who don't even want to be a Christian will send something about you that they will have to say, I want to be like you. Rich people, poor people, political people. They assigned him to Julius. Julius is over 100 bands of Romans. That'll make up the 276 that are going to go on a ship. But it's bad. Listen, folks. The reason why every one of you in the last six to eight weeks have been through hell. Have you noticed? Have you noticed all the stuff that's happened to you the last six or eight weeks and you said, what the heck is going on? You know why that is? Because Satan is afraid of the day of atonement because he don't know if the rapture is going to take place because when it does it's over with for him notice 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 9 11 happens right before atonement notice world war one world war two all happens before atonement notice all the inclement weather that happens right now in the season of atonement Notice all the trouble and the hell you go through with your children and things happened. And you wonder what's going on because the devil is scared to death of this week because he don't know if this is his time. It will be over with. You must understand the season because if you understand the season, you can tell the devil if that's the best punch you got. If that's the best you can do. If that cancer, my children, my business, my money, if that's the best you can do. Buddy, you're in trouble because double portion is about ready to happen in my life. I'm almost done. Listen. Then you guys will help me just a moment. Thank you so much. You've been so patient. So they put Paul on a ship under Julius. There's 276 people on that ship. That's a big, that's a big boat. That's a huge boat. That boat is as big as this auditorium. Maybe not as wide, but almost. 276 with a hundred band of Roman soldiers. There's the crew, and then there's prisoners, 75, headed for Rome to be killed with capital punishment. And Paul and Dr. Luke, who wrote the book of Acts, is with Apostle Paul. Watch what happens. It is the season of atonement. When you read in the book of Acts, Paul tells you the fast has passed. He's talking about atonement. Because on the day of atonement, we're to fast. That's Monday. Bible said they travel up toward Thessalonica. They travel up toward the coast to keep from the strong winds. And they travel up dangerously into Macedonia. They get to a city they get to a city, I believe it's, I believe it's, 
Lycia, L-Y-C-I-A. The waters are really rough and it's the time of turbulence in which Satan operates with the inclement weather in the world and the, and, and the Mediterranean Sea is as big as the Atlantic Ocean in some sort of way. They change ships in Lycia. The centurion negotiates with his men and with the ship called Alexandra, which is much bigger and has much more grain that must go to Rome. When they change ships, Paul, listen, because this is going to happen to every one of you that will hear what the Spirit is saying. He had a dream. And the dream was, don't sail. It's going to be bad. And an angel of the Lord came by Paul's side. He gets up the next morning. He's in chains under Julius. And Julius was very kind to him, the centurion. He said, tell the captain of the Alexandra not to sail. Julius discusses with the Alexandra, says, there's a holy man on board. I don't know if you know who he is. The captain said, hook the holy man. We're rolling. They move out into the Mediterranean, headed for Malta or tried to. The Bible says, all hell broke loose and a storm happened. The first day they began to quarrel, sails broke. This ship is bigger than this auditorium. The grain in the belly of this ship is worth day to day. Millions and millions of dollars to roam in food. By the third day, they haven't seen the sun. The rain is beating down. They're puking sick, all 276 except Paul. Julius says, we need to free the sinner, or free the prisoners. On the day after atonement, which would be, atonement was Monday this week, on Tuesday, Paul goes to the kitchen area of food and grabs a gunny sack of food. He starts moving as the ship in its third day is turning and they dumped all the grain, all the tackle. They know this is crazy. The Bible said the day after the fast, which is the day of atonement, Paul tells everyone as he's holding on, dragging food, feeding everybody, hasn't eaten in six or seven days. He tells them, don't jump ship. The word of the Lord has come to me. No one will die. The Bible says, the Bible says that the storm raged seven days. No sun. Huge wakes. Nine days, no sun. Ten days, all hell is breaking out. I'm talking to somebody. It's just about over. God's about to do something in tabernacles. On the 14th day, some men tried to take the life raft boats, cut the lines to sneak over and leave. Paul screamed at them and said, don't you dare do that, you'll get killed. Stay with the ship. May I scream and shout and blow the trumpet in Zion. This is not a time to switch ships. Stay in the holies of holies. Before you can get a miracle, you will have to be in the position of being weary and full of faith. For be not weary in well-doing, if you faint not, you shall reap. Whatever you've been through is only a signal. God is getting ready to give you back double what the devil has stolen from you. Quickly got to close here. It's bad. The 14th day, the storm stops and the ship hits a huge rock and breaks into pieces on the Isle of Malta. Jump overboard! You think it's swim? 
It's a half a mile to shore. The rest of you grab a piece of board. They go up into the island. All seven, excuse me, 276 men. Exhausted 14 days. They fall out on the beach. They're puking, they're sick. The people of the island don't know who these people are and they look through the trees and wonder who are these people. The only one up with energy and life is Apostle Paul. He marches up toward where the woods is and starts getting branches that have fallen in old, old limbs and starts dragging them toward the beach. He builds a huge fire and all 276 start coming together. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your neighbors can't build the fire. Your city can't build the fire. It is only you that know. It is only you that know the times. It is only you that know this is the hour. This is a season. This is Tabernacles. He builds the fire. 275 men crawl toward the fire. The island is looking, wondering what's going on. The storm is stopped and the Alexandra is broken in half, a half a mile from shore. Out of the fire comes a poisonous snake, latches on to the hand of Apostle Paul. The snake grips into the teeth are in and things are in his flesh. It doesn't bite and let go. It bites and holds on. The people of the island say, he's a dead man. That is the most poisonous snake that could ever bite anyone. But if you know who you are, and you know it's now double portion. And you now know the season. The Bible said Paul took that snake and he shook it off in the fire. Somebody needs to shake it off. 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 All of you calm down, sit down, calm down, my God. Can't believe all of you are acting like this. I just thought there would only be the same 25, but all of you. The people of the island waited for him to die. I'm talking about shaking off anger, hurts, unforgiveness, relatives that have talked about you. People that have lied on you. People have stolen from you. Shake it off. Something big is about ready to happen. The Bible said that the barbarous people came and they actually kidnapped Paul. How in the heck can you be a man, turn up the world upside down, write most of the New Testament, spend two years in prison. Now you're on a boat that goes crazy and you're in a shipwreck. Above that, you get bit by a snake that could kill you. And now you get kidnapped by the island people. They take him back to the midst of the island because their chief, the president, was dying. They figured that Paul was a god. Let it be said that when you leave this conference, sit on the plane going home or in a car where you drive, people are gonna feel something they've never felt. They're gonna wonder who you really are. You must be careful, every one of you, that you do not claim that you're God. You gotta have some sense to know it's not me, but the God inside of me. And I will give him all the glory, but hell, hell is fixing to boil over where you live and what city you come from because God's getting ready to pour out a double portion like you have never witnessed in the history of your life. Uh, 
I'm almost done, Greg. They kidnapped Paul. I'd like to see all of you still shout after two years being in prison knowing that you're right. 14 days of a crazy journey that almost killed you. A snake came out and bit you and you were trying to do good. By the way, when you do good, snakes will bite you. And now you're being kidnapped by people you didn't can't even speak their language. And they plop you down in front of the president of the island or the chief. And Paul has enough sense. He's dying. Paul lays his hands on him. The Bible said the man gets up and he's healed. You know what the Bible says? The same thing that's in the middle of the Bible that happens this week that we are to quote in Psalms 118, 25. I beseech thee, O Lord, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When the man was healed, he organized the whole island to get the Alexandra on the shore. They rebuilt the Alexandra boat better than it was new. What I'm telling you today is that God is getting ready to take what you have seen the devil wreck in your family, in your money, in your health. And in the next few days, there's an outpouring of God that's going to come like you have never witnessed. It is double portion. I'm closing. I'm closing. Sir, I'm going to need you. You're my man. Come. I'm going to need. I'm going to need. That's all right. Unless you want to give a thousand dollars, that's all right. Stand right there. In the last few days, um, the most unusual things have happened to me. And I live to tell about it today just for a moment. In year 2023, when God called Abraham out, notice the pattern. The Bible said he made him very rich. Then the Bible said there was a famine coming on the land and God said, you're not gonna go through that and took him to Egypt. You remember that he said to his wife, Sarah, because the Bible said she was very beautiful. She was Miss Universe in that day. He said, Pharaoh will take you away from me. You're so beautiful, he'll want to marry you. So tell him, I'm your brother, you're my sister. He wasn't lying because they both had the same mother. He married his half-sister. They didn't have the same father. Watch. This is when he called him out in 2023. Made him rich, he bypassed the famine, type of the rapture, headed for Canaan. He takes him to Egypt so he can get richer. He passed the test, and when, this is the best part, when Pharaoh took, he thought his sister, which was his wife, which was to bear the seed of the nation of Israel, because the devil is always gonna go after what God's getting ready to reproduce in your life. Listen closer to this. The Bible said, plagues, diseases and people begin to die in the palace of Pharaoh leprosy broke out on people Pharaoh said what in the world is going on and somebody said that's not his sister that's his wife Pharaoh went to Abraham and gave him double all the sheep all the camels all the silver all the gold and said you could have killed me get out of here which represents that whoever messes with you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I wish I could have brought my ark. I could have shifted here and I would have loved to take my ark of the covenant and put it before you. We can't move this one right now. So 
I wish I'd have known that I would have brought my own ark so you could touch it. Today, today, three weeks ago, in my eye, went a brake handle all the way into my eye. Unconsciously fell out of blood dripping out of my eye and my nose. I knew I'd lost my eye. It was a few days before atonement. If you look at my eye today, it's 100% better, but it was gone. At the same time, my little girl bends over right before atonement. She starts screaming, rush her to the hospital. They have to take her gallbladder out. Things happen mysteriously. An hour and a half later, the doctor had me open my eye and I said, thank God, I can, I, I could barely see. And I was thinking, God, wow. It was a dangerous thing. And all of us know when bad things happen to you, nobody knows it better than you. And it was bad. I then said, what is going on? And God said, it's year 2023. 75 years later after 1948. And what I did to Abraham, I'm getting ready to bring my people out. And I'm getting ready to make them huge in their neighborhoods and in their families. And I'm getting ready that if anybody touches them, they will be stricken with curses because you can't touch my anointed people. Help Malachi. I'm going to kindly I, I do this in my church last week. I think I had eight or 9,000 people touch the ark. In fact, I have the only ark. This ark has the cherubims. My ark actually is the only ark in the world that has the foreheads of the cherubims. It's, it's priceless. I wouldn't take a million dollars for it. It took two years to build. It's the exact size of Moses. And it's very special. The people came and they gave and they touched the ark. Because God, for some reason, said, I want an atonement offering. I have no idea. Not tithing, not a pledge, but atonement offering. He says, Deuteronomy 16, 16, he says, On these feast days, stand before me and do not stand empty-handed. So that tells me that God has already prepared the seed. Even though you may have spent it on tennis shoes and bling-bling and high heels. And God has prepared this offering the first thing that Abraham did when he came out of the Chaldeans the Bible said he built an altar and he gave an offering and the name of that place was Bethel the exact place he offered up his son Isaac which is at the top of Mount Moriah and possibly was the exact place where Jesus Christ died if we historically could find the exact spot today I come to tell you I do not know what is going to happen as far as he's coming back. But we got to next Tuesday. If we get past next Tuesday, I will tell you that 23 and 24 is going to break loose and I'm going to prophesy something. There's an economy collapse, but you will not feel the effects of it. You will not feel the effects of it. God is going to raise up the people until they will have more money than they can imagine. Even you that are on just fixed incomes. So I have to go. But I must finish what I've come to do because you people, you wonderful, precious people, are the people of the sons of Issachar. You now know what time it is. It's 2023. 1,000 years later. God is calling out. If you really want to get down to it, Peter says 1,000 years as as one day to the Lord. Another day just happened 
last Monday of Rosh Hashanah. And I have never been to any group of people like you people who sacrificially give. And this offering will go, and I know Morris and Teresa are smiling, they can't communicate, they're in the great cloud of witnesses. But if the Bible can keep going on and keep being printed, and Paul is dead, Luke is dead, and John is dead, and Morcerillo is dead, it don't matter who tries to stop it. God will keep this anointing upon the earth. And anybody that touches it, they will die. They will die. I'm a prophet will tell you, don't touch it. It will go forward. You will not stop these people. You may stop conferences. You may stop meeting in the name of Morsel. But you will never stop this tribe. You are a unique people. And everybody in here, shout as loud as you can. Amen. So this is my offering. I want to be just like you. I have $1,500 here. I'm going to lay it here. I wanted to lay it on that altar, but uh, the carpet, it, it can't be moved. I don't care what you have to do or how you have to do it. This could be our last offering on the planet in this season, I don't know. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor Steve, Greg, David, Morsarillo, we're gonna march you and I'm gonna sacrificially give at Tabernacles and stand before the Lord. I just need about 30 people that will stand with me right now. Just come right there and say, I'm doing it. I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Come right now. One, two, three. Somebody clap your hands for all these people that are coming. Come, 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 come. Come, come now. Come now. Don't don't even give it a second. No, come, 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 come. Come, come, come. Just, just stand side by side. Just stand right there. Just stand side by side. $1,500. Just stand side by side. The rest of you are going to give, I know. How many has received a word from the Lord today? Everybody say, I know what time it is. So I, I can't give a 1500 but if you'll just let me give a 1000 then come on down. Come on down. Come on down. I just want to deal with this right now. It's alright. As envelopes being passed out, I understand that. And I also know that uh, credit cards are used, etc. Come, come, just come. I'm gonna give a thousand. I'm gonna give fifteen hundred. Just that category. I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you in just a minute, but God is speaking. Come, come, be a soldier. Be a soldier. Come and stand. And say, God, I want, I want to be a part of that number. Come, come. Everybody say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. No, don't, don't get, everybody get excited. Hallelujah. Look at all these wonderful people. Just a couple more. Oh, you're so wonderful. Everybody say, go, God. Say, go, God. This is wonderful. It's great. I like that song that you guys started out with the breakthrough. What a great song. In just a minute, we're going to just get so excited. You see, write that out, everybody. Everybody write. Now, there's a, now listen, listen. I, I know that what they're doing, where is it? There, there, there is this, and I want one of these real bad. I don't have any of this. This is, this is the Torah, and it's, and it's going to be given to everyone that has come to give over $500. And that's such a beautiful thing. 
this is a precious gift. I want them to send me one. I don't have this. I want it to be in my study. I want it to be there. Somebody that wants to join with $500, come, 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 come. Let me see you. Let me see your faith. That's a level of your faith. Come, come. It's all right. Come. I want to tell everybody here in the last 10 days at my church, this is not exaggeration. We have had 13 people in our church that their debt was accumulated $4 million altogether. And they have been paid off medical bills, education bills, and debt. I have never seen that in my church before. God is doing something to wipe out debt upon his people. I've never seen that before. It's happening right now. Last Wednesday night, we baptized 320 people in water. 320 people on a Wednesday night. The Holy Spirit is moving. Every person in this room that says, Pastor Steve Muncy, I received the anointing. I have $100. Come down here right now. Come right here. Come. Join me. Join me. Join me. Join me. You, you precious people. Wow. Precious people. Come. 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 It's all right. Don't be embarrassed. That's what you got. You're special people. Come. I want to see you stand with this moment, this historic moment of 2023. Something going to happen. Something going to happen. Just spread right across, right across. Hallelujah. 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 Lovely people. Just moving a little closer. They're coming. You're so sweet. You on the front row may have to stand up because the people might bump into you. So if you stand, give them room there. It's all right. Every person in this room that says, I have something in my hand I want to give today in the name of the atonement offering, stand to your feet and fill the aisles. Stand to your feet and fill the aisles. I have something I want to give. Fill the aisles. You may have to fill it in between the pews because uh, this prayer that I'm going to pray. And I have my gift right here. I have my gift right here. I will not leave. I have my gift right here. You're so beautiful. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now all of you that will not steal any money, stand to your feet and stand behind us. Come, come, come. You will not steal any money from us. And you will pray with us. Come, 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 come. I need everybody standing to your feet as a mighty army. You're such a beautiful people. I want you to receive this anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many has received the word of God? Shout a great big amen. Thank you, David. David Cirillo. Thank you, Greg. You're lovely people. Morris would be proud. Morris would be proud. Teresa would be proud. You are such unbelievable people. I wish I had all of you in my church. I wish I did. You're incredible people. My dentist, my doctor's here. Where is she at? This is my dentist. This is my doctor. She's here from Chicago. She didn't even go to my church. She's a pastor's wife. Someday she will, because I'd like to have her. In my, I'd like to have all of you in my church. Your church, you, you people are unbelievable. I've never seen anything. I preach in all kind of camp meetings and conferences. I, 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 I don't know any tribe like you folks. This is the most integrated gathering of people that I've ever been around. I can't believe you black people like white people. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe Hispanic people like black people. It's amazing. Really, really. Some conferences are all white. Some conferences are all black. Not this one. Not this one. It's unbelievable. It's a compliment. So I end with this to tell that everybody that's standing with an offering in your hand, lift it to the heavens. 
Now I'm going to prophesy as a man of God if this does not happen. In fact, put it on your heart. Greg will vouch to this. I was in London with Morse Thrillo and there was, I don't know how many people was there, 15, 10,000, I don't know how many, 10. I went to the pulpit and Morse Thrillo was going through the worst time of his life. The worst time of his life. And many of you do not know the battle that he went through. It was not his health. I mean, he was attacked from the devil. It was a bad, bad deal. And I stood in London went to the podium it was about 11 or 12,000 people there and I couldn't preach I wish I could illustrate and I can't get personal because what what happened then is is, is, is is a personal thing and I mean he was really up against it bad I went to the podium and the Holy Spirit fell and I was trying to get started you know to preach and I turned around and he was about 30 feet away. It's a big platform there in, what's the name of that place? Earl's Court. No, no, it was in the big place. Is that what, is that the, they tore it down. Okay, that's Earl's Court. And I walked and Marilyn Hickey was there and Reinhard Bunke and there's some other people there. And I walked over to Morris Rillo and I said, Thursday morning at 12 o'clock, it's over. Nobody in that audience knew God spoke to me. We then went out to eat. Greg was there. The staff was there. We were in this, wasn't a fancy place, but it was more Cyrillo's favorite Irish joint. It was, in fact, it was pitiful in my opinion, but it was, he, he thought it was the greatest thing in the world, the greatest food. He never, he never, he never, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying this because I'm getting ready to say something to you. I, uh, there was 20 of us, about 20 of us sitting around the table, right? I, I started banging the glass. Teresa was sitting right across from me. Morris, is, when I called him by his first name, please forgive me, I'm not being disrespectful of the prophet, etc. But then we say John, Luke, Paul, so I'm very respectful. I banged on the glass. I said, Teresa, listen to me. I said, Dr. Morris, listen to me. You just have to know how serious this thing was. I said, and Greg heard these words. I said, Thursday at noon, when you get back to the country, it will be over. And we're, we're talking about seven, six or seven years. We're talking about, uh, it would blow your mind what he went through. Oh God, it was scary. Court systems, etc. I said, at 12 o'clock Thursday, it will be over. Then I said to Teresa, look at me, Teresa. I said, if it doesn't happen, don't you ever call me to preach again. This will be a proving point that I am a false prophet. I will never come back again. Teresa looked at me. You were there. She said, oh, Steve, we love you. We love you. you, you we want you back. No, I said, no, no, no. No, 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 playing. Everybody hear me? Did I say that? I said, Thursday. It'll be over. If it doesn't happen... 12 o'clock Central Standard Time, which would be, I don't know what time here. Did you ever call me? I'll never come preach a conference. I am a false prophet. I'm a fake preacher. And I am not of God. And mark me as a wolf in sheep clothing. I said those words. Teresa tried to calm me down. It's true. She said, Steve, it's all right. Thursday at 12 o'clock, my phone rang, and on the other end was more Cirillo. He was screaming like a wild Indian. It's all I explained it. You know what he was saying? Who are you? Who are you? Who is this? This is Brother Cirillo. Who are you? Because this morning at 1030, after years, the judge tore it up and threw it out.
And I said to Brother Cirillo, so that means I can come back. And I can preach. And every time he would see me before I preach in the backstage, he would say, who are you? Now I'm going to tell you something. You see the offering in your hand? You see it? By Sunday night, and I speak this with my faith, for the Bible says and teaches us, prophesy according to your own faith. By Sunday night, when the sun goes down, wherever you live, wherever you are, when you wake up Monday morning, there's going to be a supernatural 2023 coming out. Your life is fixing to drastically change. Your financial situation is going to turn around. You are going to be catapulted in the, some of you for the rest of your life because you only got 15. Some of you only got 15 more years on this earth. Everything is going to change. I command it to be done. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And release these words. And if it doesn't happen, I beg you to write a letter to David Cirillo and write it to Greg and say nothing happened to me I gave nothing happened you make sure you write that letter and you make sure you read it and you tell me don't you ever come back here you're a fake don't you ever come back here promise me that if it doesn't happen promise me that I need to hear you say amen. I'm not playing. I'm not here up for games. I didn't have to come here today. I didn't have to come here. I'll pass. I will preach to 14,000 people in the morning. I came here because God gave me a word. That in 2023, there is a coming out like we have never witnessed. So lift the offering up high and say double portion. Say I believe and agree with the prophetic words. My life. He's getting ready to change. Financially, physically, spiritually. Now shout with a voice of triumph. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Sing that song, break through, break through, break through, break through, break through. Sing that song, break through, sing that song, break through, break through. salvation when the wicked my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh they stumbled and fell hey, hey. we thank you for breakthrough God. Hey, hey. we say omnipotent almighty defender my victory my refuge the one I run to
somebody ought to give Brandon and Paul a good God bless you. Somebody shout breakthrough. Breakthrough. Well, I think we ought to give Steve Muncy one more good hand clap. The Bible says give honor. This is a man that just came to deliver, thus saith the Lord. We're going to have an amazing afternoon at Legacy. I want you to know something that Iowa Ritz at Jafor is on the grounds in the house, locked and loaded and ready for an amazing night tonight. But you have the whole afternoon. I want to encourage you. There's a special lunch. It's a Mediterranean lunch buffet, and it's going to have chicken, hummus, pita bread, and uh, it's available in fountains on the plaza. Enjoy uh, that. I want to also say, take some time today. Go up into the library, and uh, Dr. Shrillo's Bible is there in the library. You can look at the Bible digitally. Uh, you'll see, and there's also our Hall of Faith, the Legacy Hall of Faith, our Presidential Library, which represents some of the great donors of the ministry. Many of you are probably in there. Get yourself registered for Lord Teach Us to Pray. Get yourself registered for World Conference. And then if you're not in the School of Ministry online, go to the uh, table and uh, pick one of these up. It's free and you can begin to connect with this impartation every single day on your schedule and uh, get all the notes, the end of course uh, certificates of completion quizzes. And then 1.30 today, all of our School of Ministry graduates that are being honored tomorrow morning, our people who are being ordained tomorrow morning, our School of Ministry graduates, 1.30, there is a meeting for you in the upper room. Somebody say the upper room. I like what Steve said today. I never thought of it before, but it's true. The day of Pentecost is the same day that Moses went up the mountain to get the law. Well, the disciples went up into the upper room to receive the Holy Ghost. So the upper room is right above uh, this theater. It's on the floor above us. It's a glass, beautiful room. And a spring will be there in the upper room to meet you at 1.30. The Legacy Center is open. Get over there. Go soar over Israel. Journey through the Bible. Enjoy the fellowship. The fast is over, amen? So now it's time for the feast. So you enjoy uh, the food, enjoy the fellowship, and we'll see you tonight. I owe Richard for there is nobody like him. I think one of the most powerful preachers I know in the earth. Pastors, 50,000 people, and uh, just an amazing, incredible experience you'll have uh, tonight with Pastor Io. God bless you all. Have an amazing day. Don't forget to stop by Paul Wilbur's table, Brandon, and pick them up. Take them home with you. Roar of Zion. If you've been blessed all these days of tabernacles with the worship, make sure you take them home with you. And we will see you around the campus. We'll see you uh, tonight. We can't wait for this powerful service in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you as you go.